As for now, we are sticking with photo stamps. And the lovely Jessica is our model for today, so let's just minimise that. Uh, what you do when you've downloaded photo filter, it will look like this on your screen. Up into the file, and we're going to open our uh, computer to look for our image. Where's Jessica? There it is. And I'm going to expand that. Here we have our photo. Um, if that was too big, if you wanted to crop it, just make sure that you have the selection tool highlighted. Left click and drag, and you'll see a sort of marching ants box appear, just like that. If you then put your arrow on the marching ants, you can manipulate the box. If you put your arrow inside the box, you can move it about. And if you want to, and you're happy with your selection, go up to image and select crop. And there we have our cropped image. This is a great tool, I love it. And then we've got a big red uh, undo there, so you can undo if necessary. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is the contrast between the background and the subject matter. It does take a little bit of practice understanding that you need to have a good contrast between your uh, subject matter and the background. Okay, so you get a really good detailed stamp. So if you want to change the background, I'll show you how to do it. Firstly, let's take this example. This has a uniform sort of passport photo look to it. It's been taken and it's got a uniform colored background. So this is really easy to change. All we have to do is use what we call the fill tool. So we make sure that we have the right color selected and we do up here. Um, you may find that when you first have photo filter turned on, um, that the uh, it has a black and a white. You need to have the white on top, so you can simply just click the arrow, or you can click the box and select white from the colors that appear. So you've got a uh, white background. You're gonna go and select fill tool, which is the paint bucket. Don't worry about the tolerance and the opacity, and just go and put your mouse, your bucket inside the background and click and what it does is it recognizes all of the pixels that have that same color and it will change them for you. Okay, now I've noticed down here that in this bottom corner, um, some of it hasn't changed. So let's look at how we can change that bit. Let's zoom in so we can get a better view. There we go, down there. What I'm going to do, select my paintbrush, which is here, and a medium sized brush. Make sure that I'm on white. And I'm just going to paint that bit out using my mouse, left click and just drag, use my mouse, there we go, and I've painted that little bit out just there. Super. Let's go back, and there we have a lovely contrast now between the subject matter and the background, so if we turn this into a negative, we're gonna get all of the detail that we want. Okay, let's go back. Now, I'm going to show you what would happen if you have a dark background and you don't change it. So this one taken at night, maybe at a party or something or outside. And as you can see, the subject matter has a dark background. If we were to convert this into a negative, the only thing we're going to get is the light area. So you're not gonna get any of the definition of the hair or the shoulders or anything like that, okay? Um, in itself, it's a lovely stamp. It just depends on what you want to do. Have lots of fun trialing and messing about with this sort of program and, and getting the look that you want. But it's not the look that we want for today. So let's cancel that. And let's also cancel that. Right, let's imagine that this is outside on a busy street and you've got a car here and you've got buildings in the background there and over here you've got a tree and the sunshine. So lots and lots of different colors. You can't use the fill tool for that because it just has to, that, the fill tool will take everything that's the same color, the same pixel color and change that. So you'd be doing it time and time again with all the different colors. There is a much easier way. Get your spray can, which is over here, the spray tool. Make sure that you have white as your primary color. 
go down and increase the radius. Initially, I'm going to set it to 100, and you'll see why. It's because I'm getting a great big swathe of white spray paint. And I'm now my own graffiti artist, and I can have a bit of fun with my graffiti. I'm spraying out all of the background. Okay, don't go too mad or too close to the subject matter because you don't want to spray out. Now, I also suggest that you left click and you left click and, and spraying, but let go of the left click button every now and then because if you make a mistake, you can simply undo your last from your left click. If, for instance, I sprayed all this out, all this out, all this out, all this out, and then made a mistake, everything will disappear, and we don't want that to happen. So let's get as close as we can. I'll just show you how quickly you can do the bits where we need to get in closer. I can either reduce the radius on my can, so let's take that down to five, and we're going to zoom into the picture and spray like this, and you can get really, really close in there. Like so. Or I could take a paintbrush, select a medium sized brush, and I could paint it out, left click, hold, and just paint out all those areas, whichever you want to do. They both work the same. And then just make sure that you've gone all the way around. Oops, there we go. And um, I'm going to actually do mine quicker than this by selecting the fill tool and doing that. There we go. Okay. So what we have here is a, a superb contrast between the background and the subject matter. Let's select the selection tool and let's show you how to convert this now into a negative. There are two ways of doing it. The first way, uh, two ways I suggest because you want to get, uh, you might want a different look, okay, depends on the photo. Firstly, method number one is using the uh, negative. So the first thing we have to do is make sure your picture is black and white. And then we go to adjust and select negative. There we go. Now, it doesn't look very flattering, but believe me, when that turns into a stamp, it will not appear on your piece of paper like that. However, 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 I don't feel this is the right photo to use the negative way of making a photo stamp. Some photos will, some photos won't. You'll have to see. Uh, have a bit of a, a mess about and you'll soon uh, see the styles and the effects that this sort of method gives you. I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to do it by using the duotone. You don't necessarily have to adjust the colour. You can just simply go into duotone and the computer does it all for you. And there you can see what my stamped image will appear like. Okay, lots of nice detail, and that's a beautiful stamp. But, however, okay, I have to now convert it into uh, a negative. I have to invert the colours because I want my stamp to appear like this. So I have to invert the colours. I can do it one of two ways. Go and select negative, and my whites become blacks, and my blacks become whites. Or... From the duo tone where you were originally just change the colors over change the white to black and the black to white it does exactly the same thing okay now if you want to um, manipulate the image a little bit more for instance we want to get rid of some of these lines under the eyes and a bit of the nostril um, shading and uh, 
reduce the shading under the chin, um, we can do that quite simply. Uh, what we're doing, I suppose, is we're adding a touch of glamour to the photo. We're airbrushing away certain bits that we don't want. So we're making it look a bit more Hollywood movie star. Um, to do that, we select the paintbrush tool and we ensure that we're on white because we're painting away the black. So we want to have that white, which it is. If I was in, if I was in a negative and I wanted to paint away the white, I would just make sure that my front box was black and that I chose the brush that way. But I'm going to do it this way because I think you get a better view of how it's going to appear. So select paintbrush tool. I'm going to take a medium brush. I'm going to increase the picture so I can see what I'm doing. Let me get rid of that little dot just there. And all I'm doing is left clicking and dragging. I'm going to get rid of some of these lines here. Don't like all this big shading that's under here. Let's get rid of some of that. And guys, just have a lot of fun with this. This is all about making your stamp look unique and personal to you. You don't have to do this at all. Let's get rid of that there, a little bit there. Don't like that. Let's get rid of that there. Super. Okay. Also, I'm just going to reduce the lip size a little bit, a little bit of shadow in there. Excellent. And as we said before, I've just increased the size slightly. Um, I want to get rid of this shadow that's under here. I can see all of you now rushing to your pictures and airbrushing everything that you don't want on your pictures out. So don't blame you. Have a bit of fun. And we're just getting rid of some of this shadow. Like so. And don't forget to keep letting go of that left click. So that if you do make a mistake, you're taken back to the last time that you let go, not right the way back to the beginning. Super. There we go. So what we've done is we've just tidied this image up a little bit, a little bit square on the lips there. Let's see how we can change that a bit. There we go. Come on. And what we've done is we've just tidied that image up, which is just going to give us a little bit more um, of a personalized effect. And what we're going to do now is we're going to change it into a negative. So if I go to adjust, select negative, and there it is. OK. So that's what my stamped image will look like when I've inked it up. And this is inverting the colors, ready to use as a stamp. So what we're going to do now is resize this to our stamp pack. So I'm going to make this a large stamp. So if I go to edit, um, sorry, image and image size, and you can see that my width and height are set here. And I've got my aspect ratio locked so that my, my the whole sort of picture when it's adjusted doesn't become stretched or skewed. So let's adjust it to our width size. The maximum width size we can have is two and a half inches. And if we do that, our height is reduced to 3.11, which is no problem. OK, now we want to create a border at least a half inch border around the um, image so that the light when we put it into the stamp maker doesn't come into the side and harden the edges which would be down here to do that we go into image we go into outside frame and set your color to black mess about with the width until you get the width that you like I'm going to set mine to 40 try that first of all yeah that's perfect so for a large stamp pack, if you set your uh, outside frame size to 40, I would imagine you just half that when you do a small stamp pack. Uh, and there we go. We can now file and either print directly 
if we were to print directly, don't forget that um, that's asking us to fit to page, page center, original size. So let's click original size. And where is my setup? Here we go. So I would go into my printer. This is the D1000. This is the printer that we recommend for making all of your negatives into properties. And all I have to do is select specialty paper. OK to that. OK to that. And print. As you can see from what we had before, that was our effect. We reduced the chin. We got rid of a bit of, a bit of the um, lip. And we take away some of the nostrils. And that's what we've got. Have a lot of fun with this, guys. Um, I am, by all means, not a photo filter expert. If I have done anything wrong, it is certainly not intentional when I click buttons. It's purely because um, I'm learning this all the time. Similarly, if you have any improvements for me or any other programs that you want me to demo or you've got a video yourself, please send it to us. Thank you so much.